Hello all of you, and this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this relatively recent paper that makes a somewhat unusual and somewhat exciting suggestion. The suggestion that our solar system seems to be in the middle of a really really large magnetic tunnel. The tunnel that we seem to be flying through, but not really in the way that you see in the simulation here. Here we're actually going across the tunnel, mostly because it was probably produced a long time ago by a lot of different events. So let's talk a little bit more about this and also discuss the idea behind this and if it actually has any merit. But let's start right here in the fish tank. So as a fish, you're probably not really aware about where you live in. As a matter of fact, even if fish were somewhat intelligent, they would probably not actually be able to tell the shape of their fish tank or be able to understand what sort of an environment is around them simply because it's very, very difficult to see the outside from within. Similarly, here on planet Earth and even in the solar system, it is very, very difficult for us to see our surroundings. So, for example, it took us a while to figure out what the shape of our galaxy is, and it's only recently we realized our galaxy is not entirely flat. It seems to have unusual formations and somewhat unusual deformations, including unusual ripples and, of course, the folds that you see in the simulation right here. But we've discussed a lot of these discoveries in the last few years as essentially the scientists made these discoveries. And it shouldn't really come as a surprise if we discover something entirely different and something that was always there but we just never noticed it. Which is more or less what happened in this particular study from University of Toronto with the scientists realizing that some of the features we've been observing in radio waves might actually be connecting in a kind of a tunnel-like formation. And it just so happens that we're sort of in the middle of this particular tunnel. Okay, so let's take baby steps. This is the Milky Way from planet Earth as it appears to us in visible light. Here's what it sort of looks like in radio light. In the last few years, specifically in the last decade, the radio astronomy sort of exploded. There is a tremendous number of various very powerful telescopes constantly scanning the skies. And a lot of new mysteries have already been discovered by a lot of these various radio telescopes. As a matter of fact, most of the modern astronomical mysteries, for the most part, usually come from radio telescopes, not really from a lot of other observations. And so when it comes to astronomy, we're definitely sort of in the golden age of radio astronomy. So here is the same image, but this time in radio waves. If you were to sort of start zooming in at some of these formations in more detail, you would start discovering a lot of different formations in a lot of different parts of the sky, such as, for example, the Centaurus A galaxy you see right here, or various objects in the Cygnus area. But the origin and the general formation of some other objects is still more or less mysterious. One of these objects is right here, known as the North Polar Spur. It's actually visible in a lot of different frequencies. This is from the Erosita, this is in the X-rays. And you can see that this large formation here, that's also the same North Polar Spur. It seems to be a pretty large object, and it seems to be about 500 light years away from us, but what exactly made it is not really known to us. And generally, there are quite a lot of different formations whose origin is still not really known. For example, there is another region known as the Fan region that you see right here, and a lot of these errors are pointing at some of the other unusual formations, different loops and different spurs. Now, today we believe that in most cases they were probably produced by very powerful explosions. So it's quite likely that most of them probably came to be as a result of some sort of a supernova or some kind of a similar very powerful event. But the thing is, by looking at all of this from planet Earth, all of this sort of seems more or less isolated and to some extent more or less disconnected. In other words, the connection between these objects does not seem to be apparent. But this particular answer wasn't really satisfying for the scientist behind this paper, Jennifer West, who, as you can see in this picture, is definitely wearing her hard hat with a style. Somehow, she had the hunch that there was a connection between some of these objects. And so by using various computer models and by essentially trying to imagine all of this in three dimensions, her team realized that a lot of this might actually just look like this simply because of what's happening around us. It's as if all of this was tunnel only visible in radio light, with a lot of these formations simply being the result of our perspective, or essentially where we're looking at this from. And so in this case, imagine you're driving through a tunnel and imagine all these shapes that form around you. Okay, you don't really have to imagine it, you can always look at this image. So all of these different shapes that form inside the tunnel seem to be kind of similar to what we see around us as well. The fan region right here, the North Polar Spur, 
and a lot of other formations right here morphologically seem to represent a kind of a tunnel-like structure that we seem to be located inside. But once again, the clarification here is that we're not moving through the tunnel in this way. We're not actually flying through the tunnel. In this case, it's a lot more likely that the tunnel is actually stationary and is moving with planet Earth across the galaxy. But some of these particles are definitely following the magnetic lines across the galaxy as well. Here is another way to try to imagine what all of this looks like. If our sun is right here in the middle, you can kind of see that there are quite a lot of these loop-like formations forming an almost tunnel-like structure, which from the top also might look something like this, or something like this, with the tunnel itself, as you can see, being approximately 1000 light years in length. But even though this is referred to as the magnetic tunnel, it's not really the type of electricity and magnetism we have here on planet Earth. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even look like this. Here, the gas is really, really diffuse, and the actual magnetism is, for the most part, relatively weak. But it's still there, and forms these very, very long filamental structures that sort of represent the magnetic lines of a typical galaxy, something that we've seen before in some of the other galaxies as well. Here's, for example, a radio and optical image of a distant galaxy known as NGC 4217. And notice how we were able to capture all of these different radio filaments or magnetic lines inside the galaxy itself. So it would not really be surprising that the Milky Way has these as well. And it just so happens that we seem to be located right in the center of one of these filaments. Or I guess almost at the center. There is still some gaps here and there. And so if our eyes could somehow see the radio waves, it's quite possible that we would be seeing something that might resemble this. Well, not really as perfectly circular though. We would definitely see the arc shapes, but maybe not the full circle. And in terms of what all of this is made out of, well, it's probably ionized hydrogen. A lot of hydrogen that was probably produced by a distant supernova long time ago. Although the true origin of this is still obviously not known to us. For all we know, maybe a lot of these uh, filamental formations inside galaxies are formed in some other unusual way. But I guess what's really impressive about this particular study is the fact that since we've known about these structures since the early 60s, it's really, really awesome to hear that after 60 years, someone realized that there seems to be a connection between all of them. Now, obviously, this is just the first study and a preliminary study that still needs to be confirmed by other scientists, but at the moment, this looks really, really promising. So far, this paper received a lot of positive feedback, and a lot of scientists are actually kind of surprised by this discovery. More importantly, it would be really nice to see a much better representation and a much better simulation of what's actually happening here based on modeling techniques that use a little bit more detail and have a little bit more data to work with. And doing this would be really important, mostly because a lot of this is based on mysteries we are currently trying to work out. The mysteries of the magnetic fields and various magnetic interactions inside typical galaxies. In one of the previous videos from not so long ago, we've discussed that some of these magnetic filaments have already been discovered very, very close to the center of our galaxy, but now we seem to have found some of them even closer to us. And so the origin of these filaments and also what sort of effects they have on, for example, star formation would be really important to investigate. And so hopefully in the next few years, once we have more detailed maps and more detailed modeling, we'll start getting a better picture of what exactly is happening with this magnetic tunnel that we seem to be flying through. And since we know that in a lot of stars and also around various black holes, various magnetic filaments play a really important role in delivering massive amounts of material into, for example, a star or a black hole, and because we also know that a lot of massive planets usually form in a very similar manner as well, trying to understand the exact purpose of these filaments would be pretty important in understanding the way that galaxies evolve and the way that they grow as well. But until we learn more, for now at least, we're still going to be like the fish in a fish tank. We're not really going to see the full picture just yet. And so until future studies and until future discoveries, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and as always, you can find all of the links in the description below. You can also support the channel by joining the channel membership, joining the Patreon, or buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.